Hello, welcome to the session for SMAP 3D plant design. My name is Michael Mooney. I'm the technical director for North and South America at SMAP 3D. And what we wanted to do is just break out and uh, give you a little background about us. We are not a new company. We've been around since 1989, formerly known as CAD Partner. In 2019, we changed our name, same people, same product. Um, we're headquartered in Germany, but we have uh, offices all over the world. We have over 1,800 uh, customers worldwide, which is a small number in comparison to SolidWorks, but we're a very niche market. We are a goal partner of SolidWorks, so making sure that we're compliant with the latest versions of SolidWorks. Here is our process chain of all of our product suite. And kind of starting off here, we do have an electrical module, but it is purely just the 2D schematic side of things. We don't at this time have any connection to the 3D in SolidWorks. Um, like we do for our PNID. So the process and instrumentation diagrams, we have our modules specifically for that. And that is a standalone application that we don't need a license of SolidWorks. Now, when we get into the, the modules that work with inside of SolidWorks, so we have our, our SMAP 3D steel, so a full on structural steel detailing um, solution to extend the capabilities of SolidWorks weldments into a full structural steel detailing solution. Taking the information from the PNID, we can pull that information in, and the only thing we need to do is draw a path with inside of SolidWorks of how it's going to get from point A down to point B. And then our piping engine will build the assembly for you. We also have bending simulation for those of you that bend pipes as opposed to using elbows and fittings. In addition to creating SolidWorks drawings from the parts and assemblies that we're generating in, in SMAP 3D piping, um, some of our customers have a need to create the single line isometric drawing. With SMAP 3D isometric, we can generate those in an automated fashion. And then as well as uh, when it comes to the steel side of things, if you have CNC machines, we can output to, to those through our steel to NC. And then if you wanted to look at a higher level overall analysis of your process, we also have pipe fab to do a pipe fabrication analysis of your whole process. So with these, we can plan our designs and also generate the fabrication details. With SolidWorks PDM, we can manage all of this data. And then with other tools, uh, including PDM and then other solutions, we can tie into your ERP systems and share metadata. So it's a closed loop process that we're able to get into. Some of the services that we provide, of course, the training, as well as uh, introductory concepts, as well as project support if you get overwhelmed and need some more experienced people to help you with a project or advice, we're available there as well. Here's some of our customers, some small companies, some very large companies. So let's jump over and, uh, and break away from PowerPoint here and let's jump into the software. I'm going to start off here with PNID, which is the first stage of your process. So here we have the PNID. This is a standalone application, does not require a license of SolidWorks or any other CAD tools. And this is a project-based system. We have many different tabs down here, like kind of like Excel to where we can navigate to different pages, different types of documents. So not only do I have the, uh, the diagram here, the heart and soul of a PNID, but I also have reports that I can generate. So bills and materials from a PNID, wouldn't that be nice? Um, getting all of that data in and not having to wait till the 3D model is created. Uh, also component lists, valve lists, equipment lists, data sheets about certain types of equipment, whether for, for pressure vessels, and custom symbol legends that are going to be created for each each product here. So it's easy to add things. We can come in and say that, uh, hey, I want to add a Grunfuss pump and, uh, and search by certain manufacturers, do queries in the system, place it in here. It knows, the database knows what symbol is supposed to come along with that. So I don't have to worry about any of that information. You can give it a tag number, ask it, has this tag number been used before? And I can also put in process specific information here. I can type in any information or I can set up drop down menus make it a little easier on my users uh, if we have certain specific standard types of information that we might be wanting to show in there. And so these are all customizable and we can go ahead and, and say okay to that. It's easy to, uh, to draw lines. We can just come up here and pick what color we want it to be, what style of line, and get back in here 
and then tell it, hey, what kind of pipeline am I working with? This is going to be a, uh, a flange pipeline, or maybe it's going to be a, a butt welded pipeline. Maybe it's going to be a, a hundred millimeter or a four inch pipe. And uh, we can give this a, a tag number of PL300 or whatever tag number you want to see. If you want to see what tag numbers have already been used, we could pull up one of these and then count up from there. So it's very flexible. And it also, again, keeps track of your tag numbers so you don't duplicate them. If we wanted to say that this is going to be HW for hot water, then our system is going to come in here and it's going to generate a label here for you. And it also checks to make sure that this pipeline fits the pump. It says, oh, it's all green. That's fine. We don't need to change anything. We can also come up here and uh, move our little anchor up there as far as our text. And these things stay together and move around. Now that we have a pipe spec applied to this, pipe specs are very powerful. So not only do they make it easy to pick what types of pipes we work with, but also to place components from the database. Now we can make sure that it's something that fits and works with the size and type of pipe that we're working with. And so we can say that, oh, this globe valve would be perfect stop valve that I wanna put in here. And then we can just place this right in, give it a, a tag number here. And now all of this data has gone in and uh, we can update our data sheets, adding in any missing sheets now that we've got some extra parts inside of here. But this pump that I just added in, along with its motor, all of these components are now in my design. So being able to share this information, we can actually come up and export this out to a PDF. We can do DWG, DXF, but PDF is more secure. So we can choose what we want to be shown and, uh, and set these things up as far as what information do we want to be turned on or off, that type of thing. We might have some proprietary information um, where we can just say, hey, show it all, go ahead and update all of my lists and generate a PDF. And so now being a PDF, uh, we don't have to worry about any other software to install to be able for people to read it, print it, and review it. Um, they just can't change anything. And so also the intelligence is included in here. So we basically we've taken these line links, these information about the pipeline, the components that we've just added in here are all visible with inside of the PDF. So a great collaboration tool. Now let's jump back here to our PowerPoint here. So the next stage would be, uh, we're gonna jump from here over into piping. With our 3D piping in this stage, we can pull the information in from the PNID and then say, okay, well, let's update. Okay, I've added a pump and a pipeline in here. I can just come back over here into SolidWorks and we have our SMAP 3D piping tab. And we got a couple of new tabs up here that we can take a look at and see. But from here, we can see that we have a couple of three new tabs up here. Being a gold partner, we're just completely integrated in SolidWorks. Uh, a new tab in our feature manager here so that we can see our piping tree on the top, our SolidWorks feature manager tree down on the bottom. And then over on the right hand side in the SolidWorks task pane, we have the PNID to do list. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell it to resynchronize or pull in any changes from PNID. And it'll go through and re import all of the data. And then we can see over here that, hey, I've got my pump and I've got my valve. I can also look at things from a pipeline perspective instead of individual components. And we'll see here that I got my PL300 and I got my pump and I got my valve. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and place my pump first because I'm gonna come in and connect the things. And uh, so I can just right click and say, place the model in the CAD. And so then I can come out here and I can choose whether or not I want it to be uh, you know, something that I know about, or I can browse into my database of components and parts. And we can say that, oh, is this the pump that we wanna use? This is what I remember or what the database says, uh, but we do have the flexibility to, to use something else if we did want to, or if there was some compelling reason. But this is just a normal SOLIDWORKS command, insert component. It has a mate reference so that we can use the smart mates in SOLIDWORKS. So again, it's just extending the capabilities of SOLIDWORKS. All of your other SOLIDWORKS commands are still going to work in your typical workflow. So it checks this off green. I can then come through and I can say, all right, well, I'm ready to, uh, to build this pipeline. Now I got all of my main equipment placed here. I can come in and, uh, and say, well, I'm not really sure which nozzles should be used here. So show me the from two points of where I'm supposed to go from and to for this PL300 and it puts red balloons on the nozzles that are supposed to be used. So that makes that nice and easy. 
Now I can get those out of my way. I can hide them. I'm a big right-click person. We have all of these tools up here in the toolbars as well, if you prefer those. But from here, I'm just going to say, let's create a new route. And it also is going to help me organize my subassembly here. We'll say, create a new subassembly, put that all in its nice own environment here. It names the subassembly to match the tag number from PNID. And then we can come in here and just tell it whether or not we want to do a manual route where we have full control and we have to tell it when to turn right, left, or up, down. But we can also use our auto route tool, which is basically we can come in and grab the nozzle to nozzle here, and it will create an orthogonal line of best fit for us. Now we don't have a ton of flexibility with this, why it's called the auto route. We can move it closer or further away. We can tell it to go down first, but if we want more capabilities than that, we need to go to the manual route. So I'm happy with that. I get a preview so that I can make sure that, uh, you know, my components aren't, uh, you know, running into each other or having a collision problem. And then whenever I exit out of this, it's going to pull in the information information from PNID, and then my piping engine is going to kick off and build the assembly for me. This was a blank empty assembly right before this uh, this piping engine started, and so it's going to build this for me, create all of the SolidWorks mates in there, all native SolidWorks features. The important thing about that is, is now, if I want to share this with anybody that doesn't have a license of SMAP, they will see everything that I've created. They just won't be able to edit and change it. So we're happy with this here. And what we'll do from here is we'll say, well, I'm still not done. If I look over here in my to-do list, I still have some orange components. So I need to place my valve. And I can right-click. Now, in this case, the pipe spec tells me exactly what 3D model is supposed to be used with that as well. And so we can come in here with a mate reference. We can snap it onto the pipeline and, and let it orient itself. And we can also place it anywhere along through here. We'll say that I'm happy with all of that. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to, to tell it it's a certain distance away from this other bottom leg, yeah, we can just use regular SolidWorks mates to dial this into position maybe 1.5 meters off of the ground, and uh, you can clock it into position here so that it doesn't rotate. And we'll say that we're happy with that. And once we have that, we can just recalculate, and it's going to cut the piece of pipe, put in the required fittings. Uh, in this case, it needs a flange and a gasket on each side of the valve. And so we have all of that pulled in. The material for the pipe comes in, including the drawings. So that's a little bit there with uh, with the piping. If we look here at our next step, maybe we want to uh, talk about bending simulation. That's just where it's going to go in and actually take your pipelines assembly. And when you're not using fittings, it's going to verify that you can bend that in the real world. Is the pipe going to hit the machine or is it going to hit the floor? Is it going to kink or tear the pipe because you've bent it too much or at too big of an angle? All of those things can be done with our bending simulation. And then uh, for a lot of people, the final step would be the isometric drawings. So when it comes to drawings, we have a couple of different options here. We can use SOLIDWORKS drawings or we can also use um, our SMAP isometric. So this little blue button up here, SOLIDWORKS drawings is just going to be the same. Okay, there's native SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies here, so there's there's really nothing new on that horizon. But if we come up here and we want to look at our SMAP 3D isometric, this is a little different because this is not something that SOLIDWORKS offers. We would have to manually draw these things. So for SMAP 3D isometric, we can come in here, we can click two buttons, start ISO and hit the finish button to go ahead and process it. And we're going to convert all of this into a single line isometric drawing. So the beauty here is that you don't have to do anything and you can set up these templates of how it's going to build the drawing and how it's going to dimension things and the types of fonts and your title block, all of that good stuff. And it's going to be standardized. So it doesn't matter what person in your company makes the drawing, it's going to look consistent and standard throughout. And so here we have a nice uh, DWG that was created here. So we're going to look at it in e-drawings. Um, but notice it puts in the elevation callouts, the northing and eastings of each connection. So this is very valuable for pipe fitters, as well as uh, pulling in the information and dimensioning it the way that you wish. So these are all customizable attributes pulling in. Uh, I know that I need 3.8 linear meters of 100 millimeter pipe. I also know that I need um, 
64 washers, 32 nuts and bolts. Now I want to take a step back here and remind you that I did not put the fasteners in the SolidWorks assembly, but SMAP 3D piping is intelligent enough to know based on the types of fittings I used, I'm going to need these fasteners. And then it also has broken it down into a cut list. So we could also put weld lists. There's many different options and styles that we can choose from based on your needs and the type of pipe you're working with. Also the end preparations, this is butt welded, so it needs to be beveled. All of these great tools are available here for us. And we have very, very minimal effort on our part. We basically come in and tell it to generate it. We can also have this, this generated in as a SolidWorks drawing as well. If we wanted to just convert this over and, uh, and put it into a SolidWorks format. Now we have all of that right there in a SolidWorks drawing, um, which is a little more flexible for PDM and, and those types of things. Okay, a couple more things we wanna talk about here is uh, SMAP3D Steel. And then um, we'll take a look at uh, pipe fab and, uh, and maybe talk about scan to CAD. So let's jump back over here into, uh, into SolidWorks. And let's see if we can make this, this steel skid here that we've been working on a little safer, give a, an easier access than this ladder over here. So with SMAP 3D Steel, we can come over and we have all of our tools to do create beams, cuts, plates, gussets, all the good tricks of the trade. Um, so I'm going to look down here at this sub-assembly that contains my steel frame. In SMAP 3D, we support all of the SOLIDWORKS large assembly tools like GANDACAD. So I'm just going to come over here to a, a, a different layout and get rid of this old archaic hand railing and ladders. We'll come in and um, we'll look at this. So in addition to just creating beams off of lines, we can also do them from points. So we can just put a couple of points out here. So we want to create a beam and then we have a full realm of how we want to control this. So all of our profiles, the different types of beams and, and shapes. Then we can say, well, let's orient this a little better to get it aligned up to the top. We can go and pull it over to the right. Everything looks nice and good. We can rotate, do all those kind of things. But uh, creating steel with inside of, of SMAP 3D is really quick and easy. All of the connection types, that type of thing we can get into. Now, when it comes to stairs, this is a, a hard, complicated topic a lot of times. We can come in here, we can use an existing edge of a beam, or we can just use sketch geometry. Full control over these as well. We can set up presets if you had certain types that you wanted to not have to configure every time. But we can get in here and, uh, and get into some of the more detailed aspects as far as, you know, what do we want our riser heights and that kind of thing. I'm going to put a little landing up here at the top. So we'll have some space. We'll maybe make that a little larger here. And uh, then when it comes down to the bottom, we could say that we're happy with that. Or we could also come in here and say that maybe I want to, uh, to give this more of a vertical option set here and say the width of my beams down at the bottom. And then I can also come in here and add an additional step down at the bottom, as well as an additional step up at the top, and even have more granule controls out of this. But we'll say that we're pretty happy with that. Uh, and again, if I'm going to use this staircase often, I can create a preset. Let's jump back over here and, uh, and talk about our last two little topics here, pipe fab and scan to CAD. So scan to CAD is a module that we have be able to selectively import portions of the point cloud, only what's important to you. So we don't do the scanning, but we bring it into our scan to CAD product, and then we can select what pieces of information are important and only import that data as SolidWorks features, sketches, or solids. And so we're not dealing with tessellated data or having to dump the entire point cloud onto SolidWorks. Lastly, from a very top level perspective for our customers that do the actual fabrication in-house, we can look at your whole process from getting in the raw materials and each stage of your fabrication and manufacturing process and find out, are there any bottlenecks or inefficiencies controlling waste? Uh, how can we be more efficient and overall with time and, of course, cost? make us more successful. And so if you wanted to, to see, we were very brief on our time here, but uh, if we wanted to see any of the modules or all of them in greater detail, please reach out to any of us and we would be more than happy to set up a custom session for you and your team. Appreciate it. And I hope you guys all enjoy 3D Experience World 2021. Again, this is Michael Mooney. Have a nice day.